CSEC Chemistry with yours truly, Miss Shalom. In today's lesson, we will be talking about moles and volumes of gases. Today, we will explain Avogadro's law, state molar volumes at specific conditions, and calculate the mass of gas needed for or produced in a chemical reaction. So let's go. Of all the states of matter, gases are the most interesting. They have very small masses because of their low densities. So scientists have always been interested in the relationship between the moles of a gas and the volume that is occupied by that gas. One scientist in particular named Avogadro noticed that all gases under the same conditions of pressure and temperature occupying the same volume contained the same number of molecules and therefore proposed a law known as Avogadro's law. Now Avogadro's law states that equal volumes of all gases and doesn't matter what the gas is whether it is chlorine gas oxygen gas hydrogen gas all gases under the same conditions of temperature and pressure and as we already know the volume of a gas is dependent on the temperature and the pressure that the gas is exposed to that these equal volumes contain the same number of molecules now when we talk about the number of molecules here we're talking about mole quantities so Avogadro's law states that equal volumes of all gases under the same conditions of temperature and pressure contain the same number of molecules essentially it doesn't matter what the gas is if these gases occupy the same volume, let's say 100 cm cube or 50 cm cube, the volume of gas must be the same, and they are exposed to the same conditions, then essentially they contain the same number of molecules or they contain the same number of moles. If that volume contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, number of molecules then we call that the molar volume so the molar volume essentially is the volume of one mole of gas the volume of gas where that gas contains 6.0 times 10 to the 23rd molecules as the volume of a gas is dependent on temperature and pressure the molar volume is also dependent on temperature and pressure. Now, there are two conditions under which molar volume is stated. And these conditions are the standard temperature and pressure, or STP. Standard temperature and pressure is 0 degrees Celsius and 1 atmosphere. At this condition, one mole of any gas occupies 22.4 dm cube or 22,400 cm cube. So molar volume at STP is 22.4 dm cube or 22,400 cm cube. The second condition at which molar volumes can be stated is room temperature and pressure, RTP. And at room temperature and pressure, the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius or 1 atmosphere. At this condition, 
one mole of any gas occupies 24 dm cube or 24,000 cm cubes. So molar volume at RTP is 24 dm cube or 24,000 cm cube. Now let's look at actually calculating moles and volumes now that we know the molar volumes at specific conditions. First, we look at converting between moles and volumes. Let's say we are given this. Calculate the number of moles in 240 cm cube of chlorine gas at RTP. Now, whenever doing any sort of calculations that involves moles and gases, it is important to first note the conditions under which the gas is present. And in this case, it is at RTP. Now, we would have just learned that molar volume at RTP is equal to 24,000 cm cube. You would note here that I used 24,000 cm cube and not 24 dm cube because our question asks us for the number of moles in cm cube. It's easier to do these calculations when the units are the same. Okay, so we know that essentially one mole occupies 24,000 cm cube. We want to calculate the number of moles in 240 cm cube. To do that, we calculate the moles by dividing the volume that was given over the molar volume and that would give us 0 0.01 moles. Pretty simple. Let's try another one. Let's say we were asked to calculate the volume of 0 0.5 moles of oxygen gas at STP. So in this case, we are working at STP. And we know that at STP, so molar volume at STP would be 22.4 dm cube. Now here, it doesn't matter whether I use 22.4 dm cube or 22,400 cm cube because in this case, we're just looking at moles, okay? And molar volume is always per mole. So it's fine whether we use our dm cube or our cm cube. So essentially, we're saying that we know that one mole occupies 22.4 dm cube. What therefore would be the volume of 0 0.5 moles? Now to do that, we multiply our number of moles here because we only have 0 0.5 moles. So 0 0.5 moles multiplied by 22.4 dm cube per mole. And that essentially would give us 11.2 dm cube. So the volume of 0 0.5 moles of oxygen at STP is 11.2 dm cube. To help us remember how to convert between moles and volumes, we can use our pyramid. And in our pyramid, volume is at the top moles and molar volume at the bottom. So to calculate the volume, like we did in the second case, it is the number of moles multiplied by the molar volume. To calculate moles, like we would have done in the first place, it would be volume 
divided by molar volume. Let's say you were given a question where you were given the volume and the number of particles, the number of moles. You can calculate the molar volume by dividing the volume by the number of moles. But as we already know, molar volume is standard. It is always going to be 24 dm cube or 24,000 cm cube at RTP and 22.4 dm cube or 22,400 cm cube at STP. Now let us move on to calculating the volumes of gases needed or produced in chemical reactions. Now let's say you were posed with this question. Calculate the volume of carbon dioxide produced in the reaction of 100 cm cube of carbon monoxide with an excess of oxygen gas. Once you're given a question in words, the very first step is to always write your balanced chemical equation. Again, a balanced chemical equation gives us the ratio of moles and because we are doing mole calculations, it is absolutely important that you write the correct equation as that determines the final answer. So the question says calculate the volume of carbon dioxide that is produced in the reaction of carbon monoxide and an excess of oxygen gas. So here we are reacting carbon monoxide, CO, that is a gas, with oxygen gas, O2, and that is going to be producing carbon dioxide also a gas. Now when we look at this equation, we realize that this equation is not balanced. We have one carbon, one carbon, so the carbons are okay. But on this side we have three oxygens, one here and two here. But on this side we only have two. So to balance that equation, a two goes there. And that would make two carbons and now a total of two plus two makes four oxygens and a two would go here that would make two carbons and two by two four so our equation is balanced okay so we're asked to calculate the volume of carbon dioxide gas so we're concerned with carbon dioxide that is produced from the reaction of 100 cm cube of carbon monoxide, 100 cm cube here. So these are what we are concerned with, the relationship between the carbon dioxide that is produced from this amount of carbon monoxide. Now, with this question, we should realize that all substances are in the gaseous state. They're all gases. And because they're all gases, we can use Avogadro's law to solve this question. Remember, Avogadro's law says that equal volumes of all gases, so carbon monoxide, oxygen, and carbon dioxide is included. So equal volume of all gases under the same condition, contain the same number of molecules and remember the number of molecules is pertaining to the moles so we look at the mole ratio here it's a two to two ratio which is the same as a one to one molar ratio now the question tells us that we are using 100 cm cube of our carbon monoxide and because what we're concerned with here are both gases, we can apply Avogadro's law. And Avogadro's law is saying that the volumes of gases are going to be equal. They are going to contain the same number of particles. The very fact that we have 
the mole ratios here being one to one tells us that they contain the same number of particles and if they contain the same number of particles then their volumes would also be the same so using Avogadro's law we can then conclude that if we started off with 100 cm cube of carbon monoxide and that is in a one-to-one -one ratio with carbon dioxide that the volume of carbon dioxide produced would also be 100 cm cube okay now again the only way we were able to do this is because all of our substances here are in the gaseous state they're all gases and so we can apply Avogadro's law in this instance but what if we're dealing with substances where they're not all gases how do we then proceed well in this case let's say you were given the question to calculate the volume of hydrogen gas produced by the reaction of 12 grams of magnesium ribbon with an excess of dilute hydrochloric acid again once we're given the question in words the very first step is to write our balanced equation and I will reiterate that knowing how to write balanced equations is key to doing more calculations in addition you must be able to know what are the products that are going to be formed because this question does not give you all of that information so you have to know general rules of what products are formed from certain reactions so in this case we are reacting magnesium which is a metal with hydrochloric acid and uh, we should have learned already that a reactive metal like magnesium with an acid is going to give a salt and hydrogen gas so it's magnesium which is a solid plus our acid would give us a salt and that salt that is formed between magnesium and hydrochloric acid would be magnesium chloride MgCl2 that would be an aqueous solution plus our hydrogen gas when we look at this equation we would realize that this equation is not balanced again it is important that we balance our equation so that we can see the exact ratio of moles now our magnesium here is okay what is not balanced is that we have one hydrogen on the reactant side and two hydrogens on the product side and one chlorine on the reactant side and two chlorines on the product side so to fix that we put a two here and now our equation is balanced what are we concerned with in this particular equation we're concerned with magnesium and hydrogen gas because the question asks us what volume of hydrogen gas can be produced from 12 grams of magnesium and we will clearly see that in this case we have a one to one molar ratio so we've gathered all of our information from our balanced equation now to solve this problem we follow essentially the same steps as we would have done if we were doing calculating masses from equations and if you cannot remember how to do that there will be a link to that video in the description box so step one would be to find moles and we can only find moles for whatever substance information was given for and the question gives us the information for magnesium by stating that we're using 12 grams of magnesium so our first step is to find the moles of magnesium so moles of magnesium and to find moles of magnesium here the mass of magnesium is governed so we're doing moles and masses the moles of magnesium would be our mass that was given over our molar mass so it would be 12 grams divided by the mole of mass of magnesium the mole of mass of magnesium 
is 24 grams per mole and that is going to give us a total of 0 0.5 moles the second step would be now to calculate the moles of hydrogen now these steps are going to be the same whether we're doing moles and masses moles and volume of gases and later you would see it's going to be the same thing when you're doing moles and concentrations so the second step now is to solve for the moles of hydrogen and to find moles of hydrogen we have to use our molar ratio now the balance equation tells us that we have a one to one molar ratio so the moles of hydrogen is one multiplied by 0 0.5 moles and that gives us back our same number one to one ratio is going to be the same 0 0.5 moles of hydrogen okay and our last step now is to solve and we're solving for the volume of hydrogen so we solve for the volume of hydrogen and like we just saw the volume can be found by multiplying the number of moles by the molar volume so it would be moles multiplied by our molar volume and our moles was found to be 0 0.5 moles multiplied and this reaction is happening at RTP and the molar volume for RTP is 24 dm cube per mole and that would give us a total of 12 d m cube okay so if it is that what we're concerned with our reactants and our products are not all gases we cannot apply Avogadro's law instead we solve by a three-step process after writing the balance equation the first step is to calculate the mold of whatever substance you're given information for two find the moles of the other substance by using the mole ratio and three solving if you learned a lot and you liked this video don't forget to give it a like and share it with all of your friends doing chemistry and remember to hit the subscribe button and be the first to know when our next video is thank you for watching and see you next time